Hello everyone. So let's continue with our framework design series. So we will see two things now. One is how we can use the thread local class to isolate our test cases from each other, and second thing is how to integrate log4j in our automation framework. So first we will see how to use the thread local class here for the web drawer. So when we run our uh, test ng test in parallel mode with with the help of this parallel attribute, if we use this parallel is equal to test or methods. Okay. So we need to isolate our test cases. Like every test case should run on different thread, right? By running separate tests on the separate thread, we are isolating our test cases from each other. So every thread will have its own copy of the web drawer instance. So first thing we need to create the reference for the thread local class. So we have kept this as a private. We are going to create the getter and set method for this web drawer. So this is our local driver. So we will require to create the get method to get the current value of this current thread. So this method should return the current value of this local driver. So I will copy this return local driver dot. We need to use the get method here. So instead of this driver, I will use get local driver method here. So here we will create the local web driver reference now web driver driver, and we need to set the driver now. So again, local driver dot set. You need to use the set method and whatever driver reference is here. Okay, so that we are going to set. Okay, so instead of this driver, again we will use the get local driver method now. So instead of using the base page quit driver, what you can do? I will just call the get local driver dot. quit method so once it is done we need to remove the local copy of our thread as well so that we can do by using local driver dot remove so here we are printing the session id i will print the thread as well so to get the thread id current thread id we need to use the thread dot current thread id dot get id So we just need to print this. So this get ID method will return the data in long format. So we need to store in the long variable. So in the console we will get the thread ID and the current session of the web driver running on that thread. So we can run and check whether it is working or not. So from the sanity dot xml I will just run one test case. Let's say from this group sanity one. So at this sanity one group in one of the test cases from the registration page test. Okay, so only this method will run. Let's go here. Okay, test case passed, and in the console you can see we got the thread ID nineteen and starting session ID. This is our session ID. Okay, and if we start two tests at the same time, I will add this sanity one in one of the test case in the sign in test test as well. So let's add this here. Okay, so in the sanity XML we have added parallel is equal to test. So both the test will start in parallel mode, and that should start on the different thread and different session ID. So both the sessions are different, and both the threads are also different. So now let's see how we can integrate the loggers in our automation framework with the help of log4j. So you need to add two dependencies. One is for log4j core. So this is the version I am using, and another one is log4j API with the same origin. Now in the SRC main resources, we need to create the configuration file for our log4j. So that file is very important. Without that file, the logs will not be created. So in the SRC main resources, I will create one file, and the name of that file is very specific. You need to write log4j two dot xml. So whatever information or configuration we need to write in this log4j2.xml is very much similar in any application. So this is the configuration we need to add for our log4j. So by using this configuration only, you will get the logs. That logs we can print in the console or that we can uh, store in a file as well. So let me explain few important things. So here we have this configuration tag starting and ending. Then we have this appenders. So we can have multiple appenders in this log4j. So first one is console, and another one is file. So we can print our logs in the console, and we can store the logs in a file as well. 
so for printing logs in the console this is the pattern it will use same for the file you need to create the file and uh, file name is equal to dot slash logs so in the framework level it will create the logs folder under that it will create the automation dot log file okay so every time it is going to append the logs then uh, here you will get the year month date then we are getting the hours as well minutes second whatever message we have given then we have this logger section okay so you just need to provide one name name is equal to amazon test logs then level is equal to info so there can be different levels of the logs we can generate info debug error like that so append reference is equal to console and append reference is equal to file as well okay so we will get the logs in the console as well as in the file as well so it's up to us now from which class or from which method we want to add the logs so let's start by adding our logs from our test ng listener class so i will go to the custom listeners my listener so here we are printing the statement so instead of this system dot out dot print ln now we are going to use the logger so first we need to create the logger object so this class is already extending the base test so what i can do i will open the base test and here i will create the logger reference so i will make it as protected so that that will be useful in the child class as well so protected static final logger this is the class logger is equals to we need to use this log manager class log manager call this get logger method and from here we need to pass the current class okay base test dot class import logger from this package okay so we can use this reference logger from anywhere now in the test classes so i will go to the my listener so i will comment it out now instead of that we are going to use the logger dot it has different methods so we are going to log the information so for that purpose use use the information if you are logging some errors okay you will have that error as well okay so most of the time error we will use in the catch block when you are using the try and catch uh, anything anything related to the some information that you can use the logger dot info and any exception that we caught in the cache block that we can log as a error so log dot info okay and in the bracket you need to print the or you need to give the message whatever you want to log so this statement will be printed in the console as well as it will be added in the log file as well so now it's up to us how much detailed information we want in our logger so here we are printing the method name we can print our class name as well for example when you are running the logo test okay here we have is logo present test so this is running from our registration page test class okay so that information we added in the test ng xml so we can get this name as well from which class it is running so instead of this com dot amazon dot test we can directly get this value only so here is that result dot get test class get a name so here here we will get the complete name from that we need to create the substring and last index for the substring we have added the dot so whatever last dot is there okay in this name whatever string is available after this last dot give me that value okay start a test whatever class name and the method name so that also i can take this out let me take it out you can add here string and say method name okay so every time when you want to uh, log in information related to the class and method that is being executed you can use this to statement and use the logger dot info for example when the test failure when test case is failure so i will just copy this here also i will use this test failed okay what your class name and method name right so what time that test is failed that information will get in the console and in the log file as well so if you want we can add this information about the suit name in the logger file and the test name that is being executed so for that purpose in the base test uh, before starting the execution our test suit we need to use this before suit annotation so to get the information related to the test or suit we need to use this interface it context just create the reference here so with the help of this context reference we can get the name of our suit and name of our test 
okay so we will get the suit name which suit we are currently running and uh, we have different groups as well so what group we are executing as a part of that suit so that name also we can log in our login information file then context dot get included groups so that we need to store in the array so for now we are just executing the one group but if you are executing multiple as a part of this tester suit then you will get all these values in the array format okay so that you can join with the help of some comma separator now we can print both the suit name and tag name logger dot info so this is how you can add starting execution for test suit here you will get the suit name with the tag whatever name we have got in this list okay so in our case it will show the sanity now to add the information about the test we need to use the before test annotation okay so before starting execution for every test okay so this is the one test then this is the another one and in future we can have multiple as well so we will get the name of our test as well in the log file so this is how we can log the information about our test name starting execution for the test okay so we will get the information when the our test is started and when our test is started okay later from this listener you will get the information about the when a test is started from that test ng class and using this on test failure we are getting information about the failure test method so to debug the issues when there are any failures we will require information about the error message or exceptions so in the catch block we can use the logger dot error so this time we can use this error so in the error we can use io dot get message so other places where we can add the log information is from our test cases itself okay so in our test cases we are using the different assertions right so when there is, there are any assertion failure that information also should be added in the log file so this statement we need to add in the try right and in the catch we are going to catch the exception so when this assertion will fail it will go into the catch block it will log the message in our console and log file and then again we are going to throw the exception so that test ng will mark the failure for this test method okay so for all the test we can add the same logic so this is how we can modify our page title test similarly we can add the logger information for our page uh, actions as well okay let's go to the page actions so in the main java in the base page we can create the logger reference so this reference will be available in our all our child classes as well in our page let's go to the registration page here we have different actions that we are performing on the registration page so for every action i can add information about the action that i am performing in the log file okay so it's up to us if you want that information or not in our log file so in the same way in the sign in page as well we can add the logger information for the page actions so here i have added the logger information for the page actions for the sign in page class so now let's see whether logs are getting generated or not so we will run this logger test from this sign in page test and two test cases from the registration page test so let's go to the senator.xml so we'll be running in the sequence for now so let's run as test ng suit so logs are getting printed in the console as per our configuration so in the console let's check out the console first we got all the information that we added in the logger right so starting from the test suit then we got the test name then whatever test we are executing and the test class name as well right and we have added the logger for our page actions as well from the sign in page so it is printing this statements as well so before starting the test suit we can add the information about the opening the browser as well and at the end of method we can add the information about the closing browser as well so that we can do from the best test so here i will add the logger dot info opening browser 
okay whatever browser we have given from our config.properties file so i will copy this here right and same information at the end of our method for closing browser so we got the logs in the console and if you see this logs folder has been created under that we have this automation.log file just open it in the file all the information about our logs are printed okay so now let's see whether the assertions errors are getting added in this log file or not as per our registration paste test and sign in paste test okay so i am going to implicitly fail this test okay i am expecting the amazon registration page 1 okay this is the wrong title i am expecting so this test will fail right and it will be re-executed as well as per our retry analyzer right so instead of 2 i will make it 1 or what you can do i will uh, read this file or read this value for the maximum retry account for our config.properties file retries is equals to let's say 1 so for now max retries will be 1 so this value i want to read using the config.properties so we have a config reader class already in the utils package go to config reader let's copy this one So properties dot get property value of this max retries property. So here first we need to create the object for this config reader class. Config reader. So here use this object config reader reference dot get max retries value so this will be in the string format we need to convert it into the integer so use the integer class here integer dot value of this string okay so this method will return the one in a string format that we converted into the integer so as per our configuration this test is going to fail and this error should be logged in our log file as well so let's rerun this So it is retrying the failed test case now. The registration paste test. So we got the failures, two passes, one failure and one is retry. We got the information about the opening the browser. And at the end of method we got the close browser as well. And for the assertion error, we got this information. Page title does not match. Expected Amazon registration one, but found Amazon registration. Okay, so same information will be added in this log file as well. So just reopen it. Okay, so you can see the logs will be appended from the previous logs. So we got that exception error information in the log file as well. So as per our configuration, if it is info, it will print info. And if it is error, it will write the error as well. So this will be very useful when you are debugging any issue. So this is how we can integrate our log4j in our automation framework.